What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself. In this video, we'll be reviewing the Way of Wade 10 Low Basketball Shoe. I was first introduced to this shoe by my libero friend, Brant Ng, who said that the traction was amazing, it feels super stable on the ankle and feet, and is very expensive. First, let's start with the look. The shoe looks smooth, glossy, futuristic, and have a general lighter color palette, such as light blues and pinks, which is not as common in basketball shoes. I like the flowing lines that go from the front to back, while still focusing on the circular symbol on the side of the shoe. I decided to get the white hot colorway because I like clean looking shoes and I love the variety of whites they have to still make it look interesting. Now we'll talk about first impressions on the fit. You can actually play with them right out of the box, but they are on the stiffer side. So if you want a more comfortable playing experience, I recommend working out with them or walking around the house with them for at least a week or two to break them in before actually playing in them. But you won't hurt yourself if you do play with them right out of the box, which is exactly what I did. Right away, I immediately noticed how strong the traction is. I've played with some shoes that ended up being too sticky, like the A6 FFT Sky Elite shoe, where your shoe actually gets stuck on the floor and you end up tripping on yourself. But the quality of the traction on the wades is actually perfect. It makes the shoe incredibly responsive without sticking too long, so you'll be able to change direction easily and not worry about the shoe sliding at all. Now I know some players do like medium traction. What I mean by that is that you want enough traction so the shoe just doesn't slip, but it kind of decelerates, which actually helps the body change direction, especially for bigger players. So if you're a taller or heavier athlete who needs that slight delay in the shoe before changing direction or sprinting or jumping, then this traction may not be right for you. But if you like to be super light on your feet and consider yourself a fast player, then you're going to love the traction on the Way of Wade Low 10. There is a pronounced outrigger which helps with stability of the foot and the ankle. So the ankle felt great in terms of not feeling like it was going to roll or tweak at any moment. The sole of the shoe is pretty stiff and that could be a good or bad thing depending on your preference and athletic needs. If you're a high jumper, you actually want a more flexible sole, especially in the midsole, so that your foot can transition smoothly through the penultimate step, where your foot rolls from heel to toe before toe off. If the sole of the shoe is too stiff from front to back, it doesn't allow as much time for that energy transfer when your body's trying to convert that horizontal momentum to vertical momentum. Now, this doesn't mean that the shoe makes you jump lower. If you jump high naturally, you'll still jump high, but you won't feel that extra springiness or free energy return as you do with shoes that have a slightly more flexible sole or a little bit more compression in the sole, such as the Kobe 6s or Dame 8s. I personally did not like it for jumping since I felt like I had to put a little bit more effort into every single jump if I wanted to maximize my vertical. Now, speaking of the sole, it is on the thinner side. Now, combine this with excellent traction makes this shoe the most responsive shoe that I've worn so far. I felt like I got a 5% boost on my volleyball defense, which requires you to move as soon as you see something. There was no delay at all from thought to movement, which was a new experience for me. This made the transition from blocking to hitting and defense to hitting much quicker and immediate. I loved playing in these shoes for defense, and I can see why Brant loves these shoes so much. The comfort level is at a medium for me. I personally like a more flexible material in the upper. Now the upper is still fairly flexible, but I personally like it to have more of a sock-like feel, so my foot and toes can move freely and doesn't feel as restricted. The upside of a stiffer upper is that your foot feels very locked in. My foot never felt like it was sliding outside the edge of the sole, and I was rarely off balance when moving at high speeds. The heel cup is rigid but not uncomfortable, which further helped my heel feel locked in. If you have wide feet like me, you will feel some compression on the sides of your feet, which I thought would go away over time as I broke the shoe in, but I think because the material on the sides of the shoe are a little bit stiffer, there's actually not much to break into. 
Now it wasn't painful being a wide footed athlete playing in these, but it did feel uncomfortable at times and I did feel sore every time I played on the sides of my feet. For someone like me that jumps decently high, I would feel sore in my heels after every time I played in those shoes. At first, I thought I just had a break in the shoe and some of the material will form to my feet or feel a little bit softer, but my feet continue to feel sore, especially in my forefoot and my heel after three months of playing in them a couple times a week. Now, my feet are actually pretty well conditioned for hard surfaces. I work out in barefoot shoes, I walk around barefoot in the house, and I wear barefoot shoes outdoors half the time. So my only conclusion for my feet feeling sore on a regular basis after wearing the way of weights is that there just isn't that much shock absorption in the sole. Now, it's not as thin as the Adidas stable shoe, which felt like I was playing on concrete at times, but still thin enough to where you will feel the impact of your landings. You'll still feel like there's decent amount of rubber in the insole separating your foot and the ground, but I still felt a lot of landings on my feet, which would eventually translate into my ankles and my knees over time. Overall, I love how lightweight and responsive the shoe is, and like I said before, I have not found a shoe with this good of traction on the court. And I'll still keep these in my trunk in case I play on a dusty floor or if I'm heavily focused on defense, agility, and footwork, but not having to max jump a lot. But if I'm playing a lot of front row, where I am max jumping a lot, I would still prefer to play in my Dame 8s, which I actually started wearing a new pair again recently, which you can actually find at allvolleyball.com. And if you use my discount code and link below, you can get 10% off your Dame 8s or any other basketball and volleyball shoe on that website. Now, if you're a libero or a setter, I highly recommend this shoe because you will feel in complete control of your footwork, and when your body wants to go, it will go immediately. I still couldn't get used to that feeling of no delay in movement. But if you're a heavier or bigger athlete or an athlete who jumps pretty high, you might want to consider a shoe with better shock absorption and more flexible sole. One thing I forgot to add is some of my friends who do have the way of ways were complaining that the tongue would rotate and shift, but I actually never had that problem. And I didn't have to reset the tongue very much because I think I laced it all the way to the top and it just stayed pretty secure there. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the look and feel of the Way of Wade 10 Low and what is your favorite basketball shoe to play volleyball in.